fifth grade. Today I'm going to do a math review. I'm going to do a couple problems from every kind of little thing we've been doing this year. And then you're going to go to your online math assignment. You're then going to go through that assignment, giving me all of your answers so I can see how you're doing on this review and how you're doing with your questions before you have a test on Friday. Fifth grade, we're going to go ahead and do a review on adding, subtracting, and multiplying decimals. Okay, so as you can see, I have my addition problem for decimals. Now, what I want you to remember is that you have to line up the decimals, okay? They've got to be in the same exact line. That way you can add, okay? Then you take a look and you will see that this has a voided number, meaning there's no number there. Well, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to add a zero. Remember, by adding a zero there, you're not changing the value because this is a decimal and you can add as many zeros after it without changing its value. Then we go ahead and add it up. So 2 plus 3 is 5, 8 plus 6 plus 15 is 19, I carry my 1, um, uh, seven, uh, 9 plus 1 is 10, 7 uh, plus 17 plus 4 would be 21, carry my 2, right, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yes, then 7 plus 1 is 8, 9, 10, put my 0, carry my 1, and then I have a 9. Don't forget to bring this decimal down and make sure that you have it right there in your problem, okay? Now, going on to subtraction of decimals. Same thing, you have to have the decimals lined up. They need to be in line with one another. That way, all of the place values are lined up. But as you can see, I'm missing two place values. So I would add in my two zeros. Then I may go ahead and subtract by borrowing. And as I borrow and borrow, I would have, um, okay? And then I would also have to borrow from here and borrow from here, okay? So I would do 10 minus nine is one. I would do nine minus five is four. I would do, oh, can't borrow there, so I'm gonna have to borrow this and bring it over there. 16 minus eight is eight, bring down my decimal. Nine minus six, um, oh, I have to, I'm sorry, this would have been when I borrowed from here, because I borrowed one and borrowed one, so I would have ended up with 10, that was correct. I borrowed one to give the 16, and then I borrow, so that would have been, a zero and then I borrow from here which would have gave that okay so then I have uh, 10 minus 16 is a 4 and there I go so remember lining it up adding my zeros and then doing my subtracting now we're going to do multiplying of decimals now as you can see here I don't have my numbers uh, lined up, which is okay. But what we have to do is count how many place values of decimals we have, remember? So here we have one and here we have two, which means we would have three place values in our answer, okay? Then we go ahead and we multiply, right? Seven times five is 35. Seven, uh, five times five is 25 plus three is 28. 2 times 7 is 14, don't forget my 0, carry my 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. I then add it up. 5, 12, 2, 3, 4, and 1. But this is not my final answer. Remember, I have to move my place values over three times. So what do I do? I start from here and I go 1, two, three, I put my decimal there and there's my answer. Don't forget, if you do not put your decimal places in the right place, your whole entire answer is wrong. Just like in the past, I've given you a half a point off when you have no comma, but you have to have the decimal place in the right place or the whole answer is wrong. So that was adding, subtracting, and multiplying of decimals. 
fifth grade, we're now going to go over a review of fractions. The first part we're going to do is equivalent fractions, meaning I need to take one half and make it equivalent to something else, right? So here it gives me a denominator of four. So I need to find my numerator. I would do that by saying two times what equals four? Two times two equals four. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. One times two is then two. I do the same thing. What times four equals eight? Two. Four times two equals eight. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Two times two is four. What times two, four is, what times eight is 16? Two. Two times eight is 16. I then do it on the top. Four times two is eight. Two, 16 times what equals 32? That would be two, and I do that to the top, so eight times two is 16. See how I do equivalent fractions? Okay, now let's reduce. I now have seven over 14, so I need to figure out one, remember what I said, Always see if you could divide the numerator into the denominator evenly, because if you can, how much easier is that? So let's take a look. Does 7 go into 14? Yes, that means I do 7 divided by 7 equals 1, and 14 divided by 7 equals 2. I then have my reduced fraction of 1 half. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on this one. 3 over 6, I would do the same thing. Can 3 go into 6 evenly? It can. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. I then have my reduced fraction of 1 half. That's how we reduce our fractions. See what number we can divide. Sometimes it won't always be the numerator. It might also be a different number. Next, we have write it as a decimal. So remember, when we want to write a fraction as a decimal, we divide the denominator into the numerator. Let's do that. That would be 1 divided by 4. Okay, how many times does 4 go into 1? It doesn't. That's when we add our decimal and our 0. So we do 4 goes into 10 two times. Make sure we get that decimal and we bring it straight up. And then 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract. We get a 2. Then we can add one more 0 and bring it down. Remember, when I add zeros to my decimal place, I'm not changing the value of 1. I'm just adding decimal places of 0. Four, so oh, place my 0 down there. 4 goes into 20. 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. I now have zero, meaning my fraction of one-fourth is equal to 0.25, okay? That's how we do that one. Now, let's do the next one. We have to do the same thing. Three goes into two how many times? So let's go ahead and figure it out. So two divided by three. 3 goes into 2, can't go in, add my decimal, give myself a 0. 3 goes into 20, um, let me see how many times I'm thinking. Um, 6 times, 6 times 3 is 18. I subtract, I get a 2, add my 0, bring down, I get 20 again. 3 goes into 20, 6 times, oh, what did I forget? My decimal. Don't forget your decimal. Make sure you're bringing that up, okay? So now, 6 times 3 is 18. I subtract, I get a 2 again. Oh, what's happening here, friends? Let's try one more time. Add a 0, bring the 0 down. Then I have 3 goes into 20, 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18, I then have a 0. I have a repeating number. So 2 thirds is equal to 0.6 repeating. That's how I would change it to a decimal. Here is how we compare fractions. We have two fractions here, 3 fourths 
over 7 eighths. Well, first start by seeing if we can make this fraction or this fraction have the same common denominator as the other one. And we can. So we can take 3 fourths and we can multiply it by 2 to get 8. And then whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. Multiply by 2 and we get 6. We now have 7 eighths or 6 eighths. Which one is greater? Well, we can see that this one is greater. So when it says compare fractions and tell me which one's greater or which one is less, then you would be able to do that because you change them to have the same common denominator and then you use your numerator to tell which one is bigger or smaller. Now we're gonna do adding fractions. So as you can see here, I have problems that have all of the same common denominator. So adding this way is really easy. All I do is add my top numerator numbers. So 3 plus 1 plus 3 is 7 with my common denominator of 8. And then I add my whole numbers. 3 plus 7 is 10 plus 1 is 6. Carry my 1. 9, 10, 11, 12. My answer is 126 and 7 eighths, okay? Now adding fractions with um, non-common denominators is a little bit more different. Remember, we have to make all the fractions have the same common denominator. So when we take a look at this, we see if there's any fraction that has a common denominator or has a denominator that the other ones can become. And we do, we have the 12th. So we rewrite this fraction and whole number because we're keeping it the same. Then we go ahead and change these ones to have that 12 as the common denominator. Well, we know that two times six equals 12. So whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So then we write our whole number over and two times six is 12 and one times six is six. Then we come up here and we do the same thing. What does four times three equals 12? Three times three, because whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So we have 35 and then we have nine over 12. Then we can go ahead and add. 9, 10, 16 over 12, and then we add up our other numbers. 5 times 2, and yes, that's supposed to look like a 5. Sorry about that. 5 times 2 is 7, plus 8 would be uh, 15, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, 15 with a 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus that is 16. But look at that, we have a, a numerator greater than denominator. So we're gonna subtract 12 because that's that. And what do we get left? We get a four. So that means we add that one because that's 12 over 12 plus four over 12 is basically what we just did. We take that 12, we add it over here, and then we do four, ah, oops and then we have four over 12. Oh, that's a number we can reduce as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Divided by four, divided by four, four divided by four is one, and 12 divided by four is three. So our real answer is 166 and one third.